floor. Hey, you know, he says there in the song, across the floor and up the wall, we're freaking out the freaking ball. Well, if you go across the floor and start heading up the wall, that's how you get your balls to the wall. <laughs> anyway, folks, welcome. This is the Freakers Ball. I am Grimnir. It is Friday night, January, January, yeah, January 12th, 2018. We're live. We're live right here, right now. Not if you're listening on replay, but if you're listening to this live, then we're live. If you're not, if you're listening on replay and you think you're live, that works too. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, we're live on reallibertymedia.com on uh, Channel 1, which is the Freakers Ball channel page. You got the nice video there. You got a little chat there. It all works great from there. If you're listening on the audio stream, you could be any one of many places. And welcome to all the people in all those various places. You could be on, on the Real Liberty Media page. You could be on the RLM Radio XYZ page. You could be on the Freedoms Network uh, dot com page. You may be listening on the Android application. We got people doing that now with our cool new Android app. Uh, you could be on TuneIn or Internet Radio. Yeah, we're everywhere. We get around. Yes, indeed we do. So, uh, welcome uh, to everybody everywhere out there. Also, welcome to all the great folks here, as always, in the Real Liberty Media chat room on irc.freenode.net. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where is that moose girl? Haven't seen her for a while. Anyway, uh, we got the uh, cowboy and myself. Oh, barman, yeah, yeah you're here, barman. Don't, don't. I'm not forgetting about you. Oh, oh, we got, we, 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 we're, getting, we're, getting, we're getting a call. <laughs> getting a call here. Where is it? There it is. There, there, there she is. That you? Hello, Moosey. Hello, Moosey. Moose, Moose, Moose. Hello. There you are. <laughs> I was saying hello, hello, hello. Yeah, so was I. Uh, well, I was saying Moose, 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 but yeah, it works the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I am here. Good, oh. good, good. So I was just uh, going to say hi to the folks here in the chat. And I just got to your name when you called. Funny how that worked. Awesome. Yeah. And so how did Kate, Kate and Asmodeus and Beth Z and BTC Bob, uh, Calcedoni and Chloe, free and slave. Only one Chloe tonight, huh? Free and slaved. Uh, Miss Grams uh, did their great show earlier. Java Dr. JJ's, who was actually on playing tunes earlier this, uh, this afternoon. Thank you for that, JJ's. Uh, I know you're not around, but when you, when you hear this on the replay, you'll know. And we got Mr. Wanataco and his m mighty bag of nickels. Paul Bunyan and Rain. I mean, Miss Rain, the fluke bot. Rob works. Trust no one. Uh, A.K.A. Dr. Rome's the Bitcoin master. Colfax 101, Dakota Dima. Dorky Lynn. Hey, Dork. The heck's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you just call yourself Lynn, not uh, dorky, but maybe you, are, maybe you are dorky, I don't know. And we got Frumpy and Kozu and Moe and Poxified. Uh, Pox, you out there? Very bad, Pox. Uh, Pone Sauce and Slim Jim Flim and Teddy and the Phantom uh, here in the chat room. So howdy to y'all. And howdy to you. Howdy. How are you doing? I'm doing I made it through another week. That's good. That's good. And no, uh, what's the uh, good. I'm here. what's what's your what's your current uh, temperature like out there? Oh God, it's bad. <laughs> I know it's bad. I don't even have to confirm that. I will confirm it, but oh, it man. is currently minus minus ten. ten. <laughs> minus ten. You say that like oh minus ten, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. And Dang. It's, it's like 34 here, so. Oh, my God. I mean, it was weird because <laughs> Monday and Tuesday, it was like 50 degrees, 40 to 50 and 50 degrees out. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, and then we get snow Thursday night, Thursday during the day, yesterday during the day, and then it tapered off at night. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, temperature I don't, dropped like a rock. I don't know if we're going to get any actual cold weather out here this year. 
That would be good. You'd be lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we, we, we really haven't. We haven't had any snow or nothing. It's so. really weird. It's like one extreme or the other here. Yeah. It's weird. It's bizarre. I mean, it's raining Monday and Tuesday, like, and before the the snow came, it rained. It was rain for, yeah. like, a long time, like, all day. Right. Or overnight, you know what I mean? Mm hmm And then it turned over to snow on Thursday morning. Hmm. Getting there wasn't too bad. Coming home sucked bad. There are some people that shouldn't drive at all, and there's others that it, that should never drive in winter. Yeah. I mean... There's some people that just should never drive, <laughs> because they're just terrible. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. okay. I get it, you know, I do have all-wheel drive when the roads are crappy, um, which does make a, a difference, you know. Oh, and speaking of which, so you've been driving, you've been driving the, uh, the Santa Fe, right? Yes. And, and, and your assessment after a couple weeks? It's good. It's good. It's good? Yep. You, 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 is it's good, or you're digging it, you, you fell in love with it yet, or? I, mean, I wouldn't say I'm in love with it yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. I like it a lot. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. But it's a good car. It's good. They are, they're good cars, you know? Yeah. So. I mean, the all-wheel drive hit, did well in the snow. Like, I had, I mean, driving home yesterday, it sucked because there was like four to five inches of snow that was coming, and it was still snowing. Right. And so there was one car I was behind, and they were going like 30. And I'm like, okay, I get it. It's shitty weather, you know. But they were slowing way now. I mean, they were driving so scared. It's like, you got, you should not even be out here driving right now. Like, if you were driving, going to drive like this in the snow, you should have not be driving right now. <laughs> right. But anyway, driving to work today sucked because, like I said, we got all that rain, right? And yeah. then it turned to snow. Well, then the temperature gradually started dropping. So all that moisture froze. Oof. So the, the chemicals that they use, I think I talked about this last week. Yeah, the salt. The chemicals that they use, the salt, are only good at 22 degrees or higher. Once it gets below that, then the salt's ineffective, right? Right. And so... The best thing that can happen is that salt does actually melt the moist the water off the or get rid of the water off the road before it freezes, right? So anyway, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Well, this time it didn't work because it, of the circumstances. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there was on the on the side, like by the berm there, where your your right tire would be, it was pretty icy, like on Vine Street, like. Just the side streets were brutal because on Vine Street, it's just the main street that I, like close to my house. Mm -hmm. it's just a side street, you thought, right? Thirty miles, thirty mph. Right. I tried to turn my regular turn to go to the one street I normally go. No, couldn't stop. I could not stop this morning on Vine Street. It was sheer ice. That'll happen. Like, yeah. It was, it was, uh, I mean, driving on snow, like, seriously, I would rather drive on snow than on ice any day because at least in snow you can gain some traction, right? Sure. Ice, you do not gain traction at no, all. No, you don't. You just... You no. So what they do is they put sand down to try to help cars gain traction. That's the main purpose of putting the sand down, like an intersection and everything. You know what I mean? Sure. And so it wasn't bad once I got into town, but driving from Eau Claire to Mondovi, it was, yeah... It wasn't good. That's exciting life you got there. Well, Thursday morning, right. Thursday morning, I'm behind a snowplow that's got a semi behind it, then four other cars, and then me. And so I went 30 pretty much all the way to work until the plow pulled off. We pulled off. Then the semi was the head vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> so we went from 30 to 40. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a, that's a I was a half hour late that day. <laughs> Yeah, what are you going to do? Right. I mean, I can make up the time and everything. I still got my, you know, they, they let you make up the time, so I wasn't worried. But it's just like, yeah, I'm just taking my time. I'm, there's no way I'm passing four cars and a semi 
on these countries in, in this. You know, you, know, you don't pass people in that, on that, no. No, you can't. No, you, well, well, if there's ice on the roads, you don't, you Right. Take yeah. it easy. That's all you can do. It's a whole different sort of driving that you have to do, though. You have to remember that you have to give yourself more time to stop. You have to drive slower. I mean, there's just so many things you have to do to be smart about winter driving. Yeah. Like, I was talking, we went out for first Friday night. The one bartender lady, waitress bartender, said, oh, how was it up there? I'm like, it was freaking cold. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm like, it was 53 fucking below zero, you know? Yeah. And then I go to Zach. I, you know, then she wasn't there anymore. I'm like, yeah, Zach, that's up there. For sure, that's a place you do not want to go off the fucking road. No. In the winter, when it's 53 below, that's worse than fucking Antarctica. I'm like, it was colder here than it was in Iceland. Right. I'm like, something's wrong with Colder that. than that Siberia. Brutal. It's fucking brutal, dude. It's it's just so cold. Yeah, no, like, that, that, it gets to a point where you're just like, seriously? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, it's like, pretty horrible. It's supposed to be 17 below tonight. It's 15 below tonight. Right, right. That's crazy. It's just like, really? I mean, come on. I know. It's just, it's crazy. And then you just kind of laugh. You're like, what the fuck? Why am I fucking loving Why do I love here? Because <laughs> you're a scanny, that's why. Right. And then you have to think of reasons that are good. Like, you have to remember, okay, there's this, there's that. You have to, like, go through the list. <laughs> you know, like, okay, I, I just handle this for a little bit, a little while, and then they'll go back to it. All right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it comes to go. I mean, it's like, I mean, every place has its ups and downs, you know? Sure. I mean, yeah, so anyway, it's just brutal, but up there, like, up, the, the people up at Lake of the Woods, they have to be half fucking crazy, dude. Yeah, well. Not, maybe not half, but they have to be a little bit touched to live up there. Uh, probably. There's no, there's no doubt in my mind, because <laughs> up there, I mean... When I started getting away from that freaking lake in the woods, the temperature started going up like one degree at a time. The more salt I got, you know what I mean? Even though going up, it was it went from like eighteen below to thirteen below. Hey, hey, <laughs> ben, hey, ben, 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 Benoit in the chat there is trying to come up with a name for a cryptocurrency that that he's making. Ben, yeah. call call it Benoit Balls. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that'll grab. You'll be you'll be a hit. Benoit balls. <laughs> oh yeah, sex toy. I know. <laughs> it'll be perfect. That's what it'll be associated with, bro. <laughs> of course. If you did, if you went that route, it would be associated with a sex toy. Bro. <laughs> I mean, but uh, if Hooters can do it, what the hell? Absolutely. You know, Hooters is again. I I posted the story. I don't know if I saved it, but they're on the Bitcoin wagon now. Yeah, everybody is. Everybody oh, is. There you go, everybody. Yep. Now tell me, how how's the uh, how's the little furry little guy? Oh, he's still not good. Ah. Uh. Oh, he's he's he vomited today, and he's not good yet. Yeah. So I think that he had enough of the antibiotic in him today before he did that, but I don't know that because I don't know what time it happened. Um, I know that right when the boys got home from school, he did, but I think he did before that, too. Yeah. And, yeah, he's still so, ailing. So the medicines haven't... Not really, no. He's... I would, we've been trying to feed him some stuff, you know? Like, tuna, he ate a little bit of the tuna we gave him the one time. The brown rice, he ate that all one time, and I gave him it. I gave him it to him again, and he didn't touch it. And then we gave him some canned chicken, you know, some, chi it's, it's canned chicken. It's like tuna and chicken, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Anyway, um, he ate that, and that's what he threw up today, or whatever. Of course, you know, so if I, I know, if, if, just, if I ate that canned chicken, I'd probably throw up too, but. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> I mean, but he's just fucking dog. What dog wouldn't like that? No, I know, it's, it, it, it's actually not that bad. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Because the, the vet said to give him bland food. Cause he is not touching his regular dog. He will not. He was not touching that right yeah. now. You know, it's there, but he doesn't want nothing to do with it. Right. So I don't know. He's old. Like they did an exam. I brought him in. 
Yeah, I know. That said that was the only thing that was wrong was that overgrowth bacteria, stomach material section. So I'm hoping the antibi antibiotics should be kicking in by tomorrow, for sure. You would hope. I would think. I mean, uh, you know, not, you, you know, you yeah. could give the dog echinacea too. No, I didn't know. Uh, I don't know if that would help him. Oh, it certainly, but, certainly. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. it would help him if he's got a virus or a fungus or a bacteria. Right. Well, they gave me some probiotic too. It's like this powder stuff that you're supposed to put on the food that you do feed him. Yeah, I did that with the rice, and he didn't touch it. So I'm like, okay. That just aids in or in in digestion. Well, it, it replaces the bad bacteria too, because there's good and bad bacteria in your gut. Sure. His problem is he has an overgrowth of the bad right now. Yeah, and, and the good bacteria helps digest the food. Yes, yes. Yeah, so that's what the probiotics so, do. Right, right. Yeah. Anyway, I wish him the best, you know, poor little yeah, guy. Yeah, he, he's old, you know. He, even the vet said, oh, he's an old man. He looks like he's an old, old man. man. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, no, she, she was a really cool vet. She was a younger vet. Yeah. She's a new vet. But she was really good. I really liked her. She was good. Yeah. Yeah, he is a good dog. He's a really good dog. But yeah. uh, he's just sleeping a lot. You can tell he's bummed. He's not feeling good. But. Oh, sure. Yeah, he he's a trooper, though. It's good. It's good. Well. Yeah. All right, let's kick it off with some tunes here. All right. Get us going Do that. on down the road on the music scene. Who's that guy? Who's that guy on the screen? That's Papa Chubby. There he is. Yes, indeed. So, uh, dig it. Enjoy, people. <laughs> stuff there. That's the uh, Devil Makes Three with State Barrow Blues. Yes, indeed. That's some fancy picking and a grinning. And uh, before that was Joanne Shaw Taylor doing her song, Jealousy. Uh, you know, I I've seen her name around for a long time, and I never listened to her. I always kind of just bypassed her, her videos there, Joanne Shaw Taylor. And I think, I think it's got to do with the fact that I have an aversion to the name Joanne, being that was my mother's oh. being that was my mother's name. Um, <laughs> but but she's got a great voice and she could just shred on that guitar. And uh, and we kicked it off with a Kate request there, Papa Chubby doing that Chubby's Boogie at Don O'Dell's Legends. That was recorded just before Christmas, apparently, uh, up there at Don O'Dell's. And uh, great, great, just just jamming along, just uh, having a good old time, as he does, as the Papa does. Yeah. <laughs> so I might go to a concert tomorrow night. Yeah. At State Theater. There's two. There's a, stuff going on, but the Squirrel Nut Zippers are playing at the State Theater Ooh, tomorrow. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, I might go see them. I don't think it'll sell out. It might. That'd be fun. Yeah, put on your. Uh, Put on your, your boogie shoes there for that. That's a swing dancing. Right? Yeah, yeah. We've played some of their songs, like on our Halloween show. We've played other, other songs on... Yeah, no, I, I, dig, that, I, I, I dig that I dig that swing music, man. That's, oh, yeah, it's good. They're really good. Uh, so I guess it's an anniversary of the um, their album that came out in 96. Or 94, 94 or 96. It's the re... They've released a new album or they're reissuing an album or something like that. So I think they're kind of trying to make a comeback. I don't know exactly what happened, but... Um, it would be cool to see them. Yeah, sure. Uh, who, who's playing with them there? Cherry Pop and Daddies? No, no one. I think it's just them. Oh. There might be a local band opening for them. I, I, haven't, I don't know that one. I see, I see. So, yeah. It goes from like 7.30 to 10, so I'm thinking there might be a band that opens. Oh. Uh, anyway, I might go. I don't know yet. 
Yeah, well, that'd be fun. I'm, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's like 35 <laughs> bucks all the time. Wow. Damn, contracts are so expensive yeah. these days. Yeah, well, it's 35 for the front, toward the front, it's 25 for toward the back. In the state theater, it's not really a place where you can, like, dance. It's, like, all seats, you know what I mean? Right. The only place you can really dance is, like, right in front of your seat, or, like, if you're in the aisle, which they frown on that, they don't let you do that, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. It would be cool, but it's kind of, like, not a venue that you can, you know. Sure. Move around, and that there's not really, like, a dance floor there in the front, or you know what I mean? Yeah. The seats go, like, right up. There's only, like, a little space in front of the stage, like, you know what I mean? Right. So, whatever. It's, I don't know. I probably won't go. Anyway. I'll probably just go see it with the bandits and mouse chat for free. <laughs> <laughs> that would be better. Free is better. Yeah, why not? But, anyway, yeah. Squirrel Nut Zippers are playing tomorrow at State Theater. Yeah. You know who they are. Squirrel Nut Zippers. Yeah. They're a swing kind of band, like jazz music. They're really good, though. Yeah, yeah. The videos I've watched or, or seen of them, they're really good. Right. No, they're cool. Cool band. Yeah. So, anyway, um, I'm seeing that this, um, they had made a federal mandate that when they said January 1st, 2018, that all um, truckers have to do electronic logging, use electronic logging devices. Yeah. ELD, they're called. Yeah. Um, the electronic device rule requires truckers to record their activities and hours of service electronically instead of using paper logs. And a month since enforcement, and commercial, commercial uh, motor carriers, shippers, and truck drivers have been impacted. Well, it's just a change. It's not like, you know, they've been impacted, but not like in a negative way, like, you know. It, what it is is they can't cheat on hours anymore. That's what it comes down to, is well, truckers cannot fudge their hours on paper laws, which is what they've done throughout history of trucking, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously. And it, but it is a safety issue because you're, not, you're only supposed to drive so many hours in a row before you have to take a break. And that is a law. Right. It is a law that you have to take a break after so many hours of driving. And so, um... I, I think it's, it's a... I think a it's, thing it's, a, it's a safety uh, thing. It, 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 you know, I'm not about, all about federal shit and mandates and all this crap and blah, blah, blah. And someone accused me of being a statist because I was all for this, Right. Well, yeah, I mean... It's a safety issue. It's not a fucking government issue. Yes, the feds mandated it and put it in place, but to me, it's a, it, it, it just makes sense. Uh, it's just an incremental step to eliminating truckers and just going with the full autonomous trucks. Pretty much. I uh, mean, that, yes, that's, that's, I get that. That's what it comes down to. I mean, but other, I don't know about that so much, but I do know... And maybe you're right, Grim. But, right, Vinny. Um, I also think that there's a lot of fucking... I mean, I think it's gotten better since it, that it was before, but there's a lot of truckers up there driving tired. And driving tired is just as bad as driving fucking drunk. Pretty much. Yeah, well, so, then... You, you know, I get it. I mean, it's going to affect truckers, and Paul Bunyan will tell me it's a bunch of shit, and I do think it's a bunch of shit, you know, it is, I guess, you know, I mean, because there's plenty of regular drivers out there driving tired, too, you know? Right. So, but... Yeah, well, it, you know, they don't, they don't want humans driving. Well, this is the thing, though, think about this, it's because as soon as the truck moves, it's telling the device the guy is on duty driving at this point. You can't lie about it. When 11 hours of driving has happened during the course of a day, you better be pulled over the side of the road or done with your day. It's required. Our dispatchers do better, more aware of things than they will want. 
11 hours of straight of driving? That's a lot of fucking driving for that, one that shot. Is, that is a lot of driving. Oh my God, I couldn't do that. Well, I've done it many times. I, I couldn't <laughs> drive 11 hours straight through. I mean, I have to stop and take a break, obviously. you got to pee. you got to eat lunch. Well, yeah, I mean, you gotta get, you got you got to get gas anyway, so you got to stop I every three or four up. hours. I mean, I could do it if I took breaks in between, you know, like little mini breaks, you know what I mean? Night, Vinny. <laughs> Night, Vinny. Um, so, yeah, Night, no, Vinny. it's, uh, I, I understand. Uh, there's a fine line here, you know what I mean? It's just like with anything. We're all in this catch-22, you know, like... I, yes, I think the way I think and believe what I believe or whatever, at the same time, I have to play the fucking game. Just like everyone else does. I don't care who the fuck you are. Even if you aren't employed, you're you're still playing the game to a point. You know, you're always playing the game. And that's what this is. Oh, it's a right. fucking right. game. They, they, they keep changing. They keep... They keep... They keep changing the rules of the game to make it more difficult right. for you. And that's the thing. That's why we're all like, what the fuck? You know? Yeah. I mean, it's just... It, it, yeah, you know, and, and I and I think the, the companies that employ these guys should uh, be able to mandate whatever they want. Um, and and if, uh, you know, one of these guys... Causes well, a, well, that's a problem, Graham. But if you're a trucking company... The last thing you, or even if you're an uh, independent operator, op, owner operator, right, mm -hmm. of a semi truck, right. the last thing you fucking want is to get in an accident. Absolutely. And it's the last thing, even being a car owner, the last thing anybody wants is to get in a fucking wreck, right? Sure. They cost fucking money. Yes, you they know? do. And if you get so many wrecks as a trucker, you don't get re, you don't get your CDL removed. You know, right, as an right. owner operator, you could lose your your livelihood by getting an accident. Sure. Right. So there's that part. Of, I'm just throwing that in there. It's just a good idea not to drive tires. Okay. The feds don't shouldn't have to mandate it, right? I get that. Oh, well, they don't have to. They just do. <laughs> right. It's a good idea to not drive anything tired or drunk. Okay. I mean, any any vehicle or motorized thing. Is not good. Alcohol and those things do not mix very good. Right. That's or driving tired and those things do not mix very good. That's true. So that's all I'm saying. I mean, that's that, you know, it, it, you can cheat if you want, but the biggest thing is you don't want to get in a fucking accident because you get in so many as a trucker and you're going to lose your CDL and if that's the only thing that you do for a living. You're screwed. Right, so then you know, why would you do it? Right, so it just makes sense. And, like, and and if there are people out there that are going to drive in that way and they do get in an accident, they don't deserve to be out there working for whoever, even if they are right. an independent. Right, exactly. If they're an unsafe driver and it's been proven because of their track record, well, there you go. Right, so... There you go. I so, mean, at the same time, if there wasn't all these rules and regulations, then anybody could be able to drive in, and, you know, it would be all willy-nilly. And, you know, here, here's another fine line. Like, I am not, I am against driver's licenses. I'm not only against driver's licenses, I'm against dog licenses. I'm against marriage licenses. I'm against a lot of different kinds of licensing and rules and regulations. Yeah, well, so okay, I, wait, let's, let's make this simpler. What? What kind of license are you in favor of? <laughs> None. There you go. No license. Nothing. Nothing fucking license. You don't fucking fucking sex. There you, you go. Know? I mean, come on. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, why, why do you have to have a license from the government to get married to someone? Why do you have to have a license from the government? Wait, wait, wait. Why, why, why do you have to have a license from the government to cut somebody's hair? Right. Yeah. <laughs> or or paint their toenails. If I wanted, well, guess or, what? I guess I was in violation because I I cut my own kid's hair. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's the problem. No. 
I wasn't getting paid to do it. Bro. The law. That's they got a problem. <laughs> you start anyway. doing something on your own, and you start getting fucking paid for it. Oh, they want to know what the fuck you're doing. They want to know. They want their cut. Absolutely. And they and they get, and they want to control. They want to tax you on that fucking income that you're make. How dare you make income without giving us our cut? Well, and they also want to control the the uh, the pool of people doing it. Right, right. They want to know who's doing it. That's right. part of it. They, so they they, anyway, d dump me a link to that truck story. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I was gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go back tonight through some of my old. Uh, uh, read it later stuff, kind of stuff that I got, and uh, I got this one here from a couple months ago. Um, <laughs> a second, let me bring this one up. Trucker mandate, mandate. I hate that word. I do too. I hate that word. I mean, it means mandatory. <laughs> I know what it means. I know. I know it's not talking about dating men. <laughs> I mean, you have to do this. Right. You will not operate any truck. That, you will not the... operate any fucking truck unless you fucking do this. And they they told them two years ago they were going to do this. Yeah, so. they criminalize it and then they'll license it back a little bit. They uh, told them it to, told them two years ago <laughs> they were going to this. So like, January 1st, 2018. Yeah. So any company that wasn't ready for it, any legitimate company that wasn't ready for it, it's all on them. Right. Me. Yeah, compulsory. That looks right to me, Ben. Uh, anyway, so uh, here's this story. This is from a couple months ago. Ten-year-old uh, boy cracks the face ID on both parents' iPhone X. So, uh, apparently a 10-year-old boy discovered he could unlock his father's phone just by looking at it. And his mother's phone, too. Both parents had just purchased a $1,000 iPhone X. Oh, my fucking $1,000 for a fucking telephone. And, and apparently, the face ID couldn't tell his face from theirs. Imagine, well, it's their kid. Uh, it's their kid, exactly. It's not them. Uh, the unlocking happened immediately, immediately after the mother told her son, there's no way you're getting access to this phone. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're a dumbass. You know why you're a dumbass? Not only you're a dumbass because of what you said to your kid, but you're a dumbass for spending a thousand dollars on a fucking phone. And believing, and believing their lies and hype. Yes. Uh, you're a fucking dumbass. Uh, uh, Experi so, um, I'm sorry about your fucking smart kid because obviously you're a dumbass. Experiments suggest iPhone X was confused by indoor nighttime lighting when the couple first registered their faces. Apple's only response was to point, point to their support page, which states that the statistical probability is different among children under the age of 13 because their distinct facial features may not have developed. Okay, so how does that confuse... Confuse you with your dad. Yeah. Oh, it's your kid. It, it, the well, kid no, has you see, the same eye structure as the dad or the mom. So obviously he can do that because he's their product. It's a, they produce that child. And they, they, and they say, if you're concerned about this, we recommend using a passcode to authenticate. Yeah, but didn't you charge like an extra two hundred bucks to get that face ID shit going in there? You're, anyway, the the boy's father is now offering uh, this advice to other parents. You should probably try it with every member of your family, who uh, and see who can access it. And his son just thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and here's here's another thing that's not talked about in this article here. But let's say you, you, you grab somebody's phone, and you have a picture of them. You're in. You're good to go. <laughs> there's no stuff. There's no... There's no. Dumb. It's so stupid. And, 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 and why, do you, why do you want... Why, why do you want your phone to recognize your face? I mean, that's just... That's just fucked up. It's stupid. It's so dumb. <laughs> It's so fucking dumb. <laughs> oh, my God. What do they do if it's identical twins? So, you know, <laughs> that's what I'm just throwing them up, you know. All right. Well, let, me, let, me, let me hit this one here from uh, it's four. It's stupid. Uh, 
Now this one is is one of my favorite stories for uh, for a while now, just because it's something I've always said. And here it is. Here it is, written by Principia Scientifica International. Okay. International. <laughs> Scientific proof is a myth. What was that? Scientific proof is <laughs> a myth. It's right. a myth. It doesn't exist. It says, it says uh, um, and it's got a picture of something here, and it says, this image illustrates the lensing effect due to distortion of space by mass. This is one prediction where Einstein's theory of relativity gave the right answer where Newton's did not. But even with this, it's impossible to prove Einstein right. It's impossible to prove anybody right. Uh, you've heard our great, greatest scientific theories, the theory of evolution, the Big Bang Theory, the theory of gravity. You also heard the concept of proof and the claims that certain pieces of evidence prove the validities of these theories. Fossils, genetics, inheritance, uh, DNA, prove the theory of evolution, the Hubble expansion of the universe, the evolution of the stars, galaxies, and heavy elements, the existence of cosmic microwave background, proves the Big Bang Theory, and falling objects, GPS clocks, planetary motion, and the deflection uh, of starlight prove the theory of gravity. Except that's a complete lie. <laughs> While they provide evidence leading possibly towards maybe those theories, they're not proof. In fact, when it, when it comes to science, proving anything is an impossibility. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, it's exactly what I've always said. <laughs> I'm my ass off over here. <laughs> it's, all, it's all bullshit. But they tell you, oh, no, it's science. We know this. It says, in theory, differing properties of Jupiter's great red spot distinct from the rest of the atmosphere could be related to thermal differences from coming from below. Even if the evidence comes in to support this idea, it won't constitute scientific proof. <laughs> Reality is a complicated place. All we have to guide us from an empirical point of view are the quantities we can measure and observe. Even at that, those quantities are only as good as the tools and equipment we use to make the observations and measurements. Distances and sizes are only as good as the measuring sticks you have uh, access to. Brightness measurements are only good as your ability to count and quant quantify photons. Even time itself is only known as well as the, the clock you have to measure the passage. No matter how good your measurements and observations are, there's, no, there's a limit. There's a limit. There's, there's no, there's, yeah, I have to request just now. There's no absolute proof of, of, of anything. <laughs> anyway, let's read the rest of this for yourself. I, I, I've, been, I've been saving that for a couple of months here. Um. <laughs> Good one, Moose. <laughs> anyway, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. You can't prove nothing. Everything's fucking bullshit. Pretty much. Okay, you know, once you wrap your mind around that, like, you know, it's a little bit better. Like, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's nothing too difficult about it, about it being bullshit, because, you know, that's, that's how bullshit kind of works. <laughs> so you, you live in a little town named Eau Claire. Oh, no, it's they, a medium town. It's well, not whatever. Don't get, don't get caught up in my description of it being a little town. <laughs> you live in a little town named Eau Claire. In Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And Eau Claire means? Clear water. Clear water. Clear oh, Wisconsin right. water. Yeah, actually, Cla Eau Claire is always water, and Claire is clear. So it's yeah. like French, so it's like water clear. Well, you live in, you live in water clear Wisconsin. And this is Wisconsin Waters. Oh, nice, yes. <laughs> I'm just my boys. Yeah.
Ah, yes, the greatest rock and roll band there ever was, the Rolling Stones, with 2,000 light years from home. Excellent stuff there. <laughs> Very psychedelic, uh, psychedelic vid, psychedelic uh, music. Anyway, before that, a free enslaved request, Gary Clark Jr., when my train pulls in, uh, jamming in the van. And we kicked it off there with uh, horseshoes and hand grenades for the Mighty Moose Girl. We're doing uh, Wisconsin Waters. You know it, baby. You know it. <laughs> yeah. Solid, solid stuff, I tell you, man. That's a, that was a good set. Yeah. That was excellent. Okay. So I found this link. So you found this from, link. From the website, from the trenches, worldreport.com. Okay. Did it today. This is posted today, like I said. Okay. Anyway, where the, okay, it, it just, it, go, it starts off with a Bible book. Bible verse. Anyway, I'll read it. Just I'm not religious. I'm not a Christian, but I, re I will read this. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land. That's from Ezekiel 34:29. Oh, sit down there. Old Testament, I believe. I couldn't tell you. I, I think it is. I'm not. Don't quote me on that. Like I said, it's been a long time. Since I've had to, whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, endure. Anyway, where did the word marijuana come from? In the mid 1930s, the M word was created. The mid 1930s. Okay. To tarnish the good image and phenomenal history of the hemp plant, as you will read, the facts cited here with references are generally verifiable in the Encyclopedia Britannica, which was printed on pen paper for 150 years. All school books were made from hemp for flat There's a powerful in the connection. 80s. Uh, it was illegal to pay taxes with hemp. In America, from, 19, from 1631 until the early 1800s, it was legal to pay taxes with hemp. I read that wrong. Sorry. Uh, refusing to grow hemp in America during the 17th and 18th centuries was against the law. You could be jailed in Virginia for refusing to grow hemp from 1763 to 1769. I think that had anything to do with the Civil War. Wait, when was that? Wait. No, no, that was before. That was before the Revolutionary War. What years? What? what? Holy crap, 1763 to 1769. Here I'm thinking 18... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and other founding fathers through hemp, Washington and Jefferson Diaries. Uh, that's from the Washington Jefferson Diaries. Jefferson smuggled hemp seeds from China to France and then to America. Benjamin Franklin owned one of the first paper mills in America and it processed hemp. Also, the War of 1812 was fought over hemp. Napoleon wanted to cut off Moscow's export to England. Emperor wears no clothes, Jack Herrera. That's from that book, Emperor wears no clothes. These are like excerpts from books. I will post the link. But there are so many facts that will blow your freaking mind, people. I mean, you just have to scratch the surface a little bit, like, I mean, it doesn't take much to learn, get information. Right. And, you know, people might criticize you, like, my kids especially have said, oh, well, you just read this article on the Internet, you think it's true. It's like, no, it's not just an article. It's like historical fact. You know, there's a difference between historical fact and, and hearsay. You know what I mean? Right. Historical fact is documented. This is true. Farmers in Kansas true. and Iowa and Nebraska were forced to grow hemp during World War II. I'm not reading off this article anymore. I'm just telling you I know this. Because hemp is the, makes the strongest rope. It makes the best textile. Right. As, and as it, as, it, as it points out here in this article, Andrew yeah. Mellon became Hoover's Secretary of the Treasury and DuPont's right. primary investor. He appointed his future nephew-in-law, 
Harry J. Anslinger, uh, to yep. the head of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs. Secret meetings were held by these financial tycoons. Hemp was declared dangerous and a threat to their billion-dollar enterprises. For their dynasties right. to remain intact, hemp had to go. The men took an obscure Mexican slang word, marijuana, and pushed it into the consciousness of America. What that happened before this time, bro? Well, this, this was after... Um, well, it was called that back in the 20s. Oh, right, but that's that's when... That, that that's when these guys that's were around. They added to the schedule of yes, right. Yeah, that's well, they saying. got they got and they got the UN to uh, to to make it a global thing to do that. Yes, exactly. So that, that's that's how that's how I they mean, work. It, it, that's it, how they it, work. It was demonized. The it, it was demonized in the twenties too. I mean, it was demonized because they tried to say, well, only black people smoke weed. That was so far from the truth, but that's what they tried, that, like, especially down in the south. You know what I mean? Right. Like, believe it or not, and this is like off the subject a little bit, but not really, but down in the south, if a black man even looked at a white woman, they could get lynched for that. Sure. Well, they could get they lynched just for a being a black woman, man, but, you know. Looked at, yeah, they, they, you know, they didn't even have to do that. If that you looked at some white woman and you were a black man, they would take offense to that. And it's like, I'm sorry, you can't, you know what I mean? I mean, like they were supposed to look down if they saw a white woman approaching them, they walk in their way. You know, I'm talking down like in the South and everything. You sure. Know, or in, not even just in the South, I'm sure it happened everywhere, but that's ridiculous. Right. That is ridiculous. And then they, I'm sure a lot, most people have seen Reefer Madness. If you have it, you need to see it because it will just show you the, the idiocy of the demonization of marijuana and hemp. Yeah. Hemp is basically the male plant because the male plant doesn't produce the bud. Female plants produce the bud. So basically, the male plant is the hemp plant. Right. Of weed. Right. And there is some THC, but it's a very, very low level of THC. You'd have yeah, to well, you know, you, a lot of fucking you, wouldn't, you couldn't get high on you, you could cultivate it up to, to be better, but... You could, but it would take a long time. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this article from about a week ago, following right in on your footsteps there, right. on, your, on your heels, uh, from the Inquisitor.com, Cannabis Prohibition is a violation of our basic human rights. It is. I've said that forever. I've said it's, it's, it's a travesty against humankind. So this article, it says, uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced last week uh, to end the policies covering the Justice Department's approach to state cannabis legalization that were enacted during the Obama administration. Under the policies outlined in the three Justice Department memos sent while Obama was president, the federal government took a decidedly lax approach. Yeah, ask all the guys in prison over weed during yeah, his, during ask his, them. Uh, the, uh, how, how lax it was, to investigating and prosecuting the growth and sale of cannabis in states that have legalized it for medical and or recreational purposes. The idea would be to allow the states to be the incubators in a test to determine if more progressive cannabis policy was a good idea for the entire country. By and large, states that have legalized cannabis on some level have seen overwhelming success. Tax, right. revenue, tax revenue has been skyrocketing in states like Oregon, Washington, and Colorado, yep. and studies have shown that legalization has not led to an increase in crime or use of hard drugs. According to the WAPO, Report opiate addiction and abuse is down in Colorado as a result of people with chronic pain using weed instead. Of course it is. Of course. I've been saying that all along. Oh, my God. I've been saying that all along. But this doesn't matter, apparently, to Jeff Sessions. No, 
Long, well, he's a fucking douchebag, and everyone <laughs> fucking knows it. A long-time drug he's warrior. He's a fucking stoner out there. And an irrational opponent of cannabis, cannabis legalization. Disregarding typical conservative love affair with the so-called states' rights, Session, oh, fuck me. Session, Session has decided that he, and he alone, should be charged with deciding whether adults throughout the nation should yeah, be dude. allowed to no. legally use cannabis for medical no, or you recreational don't have no purposes. Fucking right to fucking decide that, buddy. Ugh. Instead, Sessions is looking to ramp up the failed drug war with its excessive spending and draconian laws that routinely send non-violent offenders, who are they offending, to prison. Uh, whether this is tied to Sessions' support for cronious relationship with the private prison industry, of course it is, one can merely speculate. Yes, he has a, a lot of investment. Oh, yeah. You're going to speculate on that? No, he, he, has, he has huge investments in the private prison complex. Uh, but it doesn't take a wide stretch of the imagination to see how the private prison industry would benefit from ramping, because so many of the no private, private prisons are failing these days. they they got to do something. It's um, all about money. It's all about money. Always comes down to that. <laughs> it does. So, Jeff Sessions... Go suck somebody's asshole. Right. Just fucking get the fuck away. Go away. He's a fucking dick. And I'm not surprised because most of them are. All politicians, in my opinion, are fucking dicks. So, dickheads. Yeah. Assholes. Liars. Cheaters. Thieves. Oh, but wait. Oh, wait, here's one that I came across. These bastards. Here's, here's one that I came across today that you're going to absolutely... Love. I'm gonna love it. I don't. I doubt that. I doubt that. <laughs> Obscure vomiting illness linked <laughs> no. to long-term pot use. Oh no, that's not correct. This no. is a fake news story, it's, it's, people. Well, it's it's on Scientific American. I don't care. I don't care what science on. It says. It says, it says, the rare syndrome can affect people who smoke many times a day over a lengthy period. Blah, 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 blah. Wait, wait, blah. wait. Does that fit anybody you know? Smoke many times a day over a lengthy period? <laughs> no. No one I know does that. <laughs> All right. I'm not even going to go to, through the the, the, the sob, sad sob story about uh, Chalafonte Lenny Queen. Who, who who they talk about for the first three quarters of this article about her vomiting illness. I'm going to come right down to this little part right here that says, okay. there's no hard data on the prevalence of the illness. <laughs> 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 and then down to, and, and then down <laughs> and then down to this part that says, the exact cause of the condition is still a mystery. Toxicologists say the chemical compounds in marijuana may throw off the normal hey. may throw off the normal function of the body's cannabinoid receptors, which help regulate the nervous system. Some people may uh, be, there, some people <laughs> some people may be genetically predisposed to the syndrome with, hey. with or without weed. That's a blanket statement when they say maybe. Yeah. Just covering their ass, going, we don't know her, sir, we're not saying yes. No, no, we're, saying, we're, no. we're making shit up. We can't at, say for sure. We're, no, we can't say for sure. We're just making shit right. up here in order to scare you away from weed. Exactly. That's the, right. all they're doing. And and I didn't really want to get into any more of the article because it, it, it's filled with so much crap. Um, uh, like I said, if you read the first three quarters of the article, it's this big, sad, sob story. Oh, this poor woman. She's gone through all this stuff. Uh, it doesn't even, and then they tell you it sounds counterintuitive because people know that uh, marijuana eases nausea. It doesn't make you vomit. <laughs> but the, the, it's just trying to, you know, get get one or two uh, oh, people, you know, if they can if they can scare a couple people. Oh, that might cause me to vomit. Oh, I'm not gonna do that. That's bad. That's oh, yeah, bad news. Alcohol doesn't cause that at all. Well, <laughs> yeah. Alcohol never makes anyone vomit. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, the price of of the weed. Yeah, that's that's a whole different story. There, free. Um, 
<laughs> it's ridiculous, people. Oh, anyway. <laughs> uh, now, now, this was something. I, I, I don't know if this is true. I, I can't speak to its truth or not truth. It's on humansarefree.com. Are we? That's just the name of the website. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get all like, it's expensive on you. <laughs> Wi Fi devices increase mercury release from dental amalgams. No shit, Sherlock. Well, I, I, I know there's a lot of stuff about. Wi-Fi devices and their and their uh, right, neg right. negative effects on the body, but I had never uh, come across this until now. Um, anyway, it says recent research indicates uh, that our increasingly Wi-Fi saturated environment could be greatly amplifying the dangers of mercury exposure from dental amalgams. The the new study published in the Journal of Neuroimmunology. Oof, uh, effect <laughs> entitled Effect of Radio Frequency Radiation from Wi Fi Devices brain. on Mercury brain. Release from an Amalgam Restorations. That sounds like an exciting read. Anyway, no. reveal reveals that the new or now ubiquitous exposure to Wi Fi radiation and as you are sitting wherever you're sitting, there's probably a yeah. router somewhere near you that's oh, yeah. routing things Wi Fi. Right Wi-Fi, wi fi and maybe you got a cell phone that's attached up oh, and yeah. Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah, that's sitting right, it's not on my body. But and a tablet, right and, and, and who knows what other Wi-Fi stuff you got sitting around, but you got stuff going on. And then there's all, you know, the cell phone towers that are hanging around near your house. And, yep. Um, anyway. And the microwaves that people have and people use. <laughs> anyway, anyway, this this, uh, this study apparently reveals that our now, ubiquitous exposure to Wi-Fi radiation may be amplifying the toxicity of dental amalgams and other forms of mercury exposure to the human body. Brazilian researchers, in what appears to be the first study of its kind, looked specifically at the potential for Wi-Fi signals to increase the release of mercury from those dental fillings that they said were so great for you to have, which they just drilled holes in perfectly good teeth and filled your teeth because they made money and and your insurance paid for it. And and so they just drilled through your perfectly good teeth and put yep. this nasty poison in there. And then many years later, 15, 20, 30 years down the road, right. your your teeth uh, well, it, leaches out, it leaches out eventually and, you know, it's just through your saliva and everything. It breaks it down. So, um, these dental amalgams, which are composed of approximately 50% elemental mercury. I believe it. 50%. It's a lot wow. of, I mean, some, some fillings are pretty big. Wow. Wow. That's <laughs> so insane. The, the, the highly controlled method researchers wow. used to recreate the amalgam-filled teeth using standard protocols and then storing them in a saline solution at 37C, which is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, for 14 right. days. Uh, the 14-day period was chosen because previous research had revealed that mercury is released from amalgam restorations at gradually decreasing amounts to a constant level 14 days after the filling. Anyway, I'll, I'll let you read the rest of this, this thing for yourself here. Um, but... Uh, if you have any of these mercury fillings still in your head, yeah. get them pulled out. Um, just, just just get them pulled out because you, you well don't, you can't necessarily. I mean, let me no, pull you, the whole fucking tooth. No, well you you can you can they can pull take them out and they'll put in something else. Uh, they implant? Can, you know how much them cost? Well, they well, they, no, they, uh, they can take your your filling out and they can put it replace it with stainless steel or ceramic or. Um, oh, replace the filling. That's yeah. different. That costs money too, though. Well, yeah, it's not, it's not free. Sure. <laughs> but, but so, um, you know, mercury coursing through. Yeah, not everybody can just run out there and get uh, their, all their mercury fillings replaced. No, no, it's, I'm it's just, I'm just saying. If it, 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 and they're, but they're still putting these things in. I mean, it's it's not like a, they, they, they banned They use the, a different material, though. They use, they're, they're using a different material now. They're using a white material, and I don't know what it's called, but it's not. 
amalgam. But is it mercury? I don't think so. It's I don't know what it is, but it's more expensive. Yeah. And I, who knows what it is? It might be something that works. I have no idea. You know what I mean? But I know that they're they're shying away from amalgam. At least at my dentist's office, they do. Right. You know, because it's more expensive, but it, so some dentists still use it because it's cheaper. But they have it's it's gone up by the wayside. I'm saying the last fifteen years. 20 years, maybe. Yeah. But, yeah, it's crazy because now what they do is they use this stuff where they have to use, like, a freaking light to get it to set. Oh. So they have this, like, tool that, like, shines this blue light in your mouth. Like, they shine this blue light in your mouth. Like, they'll do a, a they'll put the material in there, on there, and then they'll shine this blue light in your mouth. <laughs> it's just set it, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, what's that blue light doing to me? You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. You know, what's that thing? You know, is that some kind of laser? You're like, you know, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> yeah, it's a death ray. That's all. <laughs> yeah, a death ray. Yeah, great. Yeah, thanks for putting that in my head. Yeah, that's great. So every time they shine that thing, I'm like, I'm dead. Yeah. No, if they, like, put a fucking filling in there or whatever, you know, and then the material, then they put that, shine that light on it. It helps it to harden faster or something. Yeah, yeah I, it is a huge scam. But dentists make way too much fucking money. Well, all, all those, all those medical types do. Oh, it's ultraviolet free set. I, I believe that is what it is. It, it sets it. Yeah, it seals it. Uh, that could certainly be it. it, it they make you wear freaking goggles and shit. They make you wear fucking sunglasses. Yeah. It's all like, right. Really, well, it's, it's time for a word from our sponsor of the week. All right. And, and, and I suggest you pay close attention to this this advertisement. Yeah. It's only a 30-second piece. But uh, <laughs> this is a real thing. This is I didn't make this up. It's not fake. <laughs> My favorite kind. <laughs> so here you go. There's a powerful connection between the dollar and Taco Bell. Ah, yeah, very nice. That's the Nimmo Brothers, uh, Scotland, uh, Scotland boys. There, um, they, most of those guys, the, those brothers are awesome guitarists, and you can tell they're best friends. Uh, they they played a show at the uh, Blues Moose Cafe a few years back, uh, probably five years back now, and uh, that's where I first heard of them from. And uh, boy, they they just put on an excellent show. Uh, before that, we had Judas Priest from their new album Lightning. St uh, the the song is Lightning Strike. Uh, what's the name of that new? Uh, it might be the new, oh, the new album is called Firepower, which will be coming out uh, in March, on March 9th. And uh, I, I tell you, man. Rob Halford, for being 66 years old, can still belt out the tunes. Um, lightning strike, singular. singular. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, they should be. they got a new album coming out, so they should be going on tour. Um, <laughs> but, man, Halford just, just keeping on to, uh, yeah, just excellent there. And uh, Avenged Sevenfold before that, doing the stones as tears go by. And we kicked it off there with a commercial from our sponsor. Okay, not our sponsor. From uh, the Taco Bell, the Bell Lumin oh Bell Luminati. <laughs> oh yes, the uh, Bell Luminati. Oh my God! <laughs> when I saw this today, this is the first time I saw this commercial today. It's so <laughs> weird because Grim had seen it a week week ago, apparently. Yeah. And I don't watch much TV, and I have not seen it. We were at the, me and my son Zach were at the bar, so I have a fish fry, and this commercial comes on, and I happen to look up at the TV where there was a basketball game on. And this commercial comes on, and I'm like, I mean, my jaw literally dropped. I was like, <laughs> I mean, I didn't even say anything. All I did was register in my brain, and went, oh my god, I have to talk about that on the figure tonight. I'm like, this has to be talked about. I'm like, they're so blatant and in our faces with this. I mean, it's like they're not even pretending anymore, people. They're, like, telling you how it is. Right, right. 
I mean, this is, it, it, I don't know, maybe they're, like Grim said, we were kind of chatting about it while the music was playing, and it's just like, they're giving, they're like normalizing us to the fact. They're telling you right there in this commercial where you're standing, who's in control. Oh, yeah, who's no in doubt. Charge. And the first, another thing that came to mind when I first saw the commercial is Taco Bell, which is owned by Pepsi. You know? Right. And I don't know who Pepsi's owned by, <laughs> but um, Pepsi's a pretty big dog. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, Pepsi and Coke and all those, uh, you know, all, we all know the big ones, the big corporations. Sure. No, I mean, but, it, it, you know, well, let's, let's, let's they talk about collusion. No, I just want to listen. They talk about collusion, right? Yeah. Collusion is a normal occurrence in the, in the government, all right? Oh, right, it's sure. It's not new. It's 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 part of the court. It's part of it. Collusion is basically the backbone of fucking government. Sure. That's what it's all about. Well, let, let, let's let's so see don't that. Let them, them fool you thinking, well, these people were colluding when it's going on all the time, rampantly, twenty four seven, three sixty five. Well, here, here, here. Watch, watch the other spot. I got I got another spot here. Uh, another 30 second spot for, from them. Okay, yeah, let's watch this. Yeah. All right. At Taco Bell, the dollar gets you access to more. Like the new $1 stacker with lavish layers of seasoned beef and melty cheese. But how can all these layers only cost a dollar? Something's not stacking up. Is the $1 stacker reserved for a secret society or just anyone with a dollar? The answer is yes. <laughs> wow. Wow. There's, I can't even know. I don't even know where to start with that. It's like a triangle symbol with the hand. I know, man. I know. They, they, they do it all. Oh, my God. The symbolism, the pyramid, the fucking, oh, my, the dollar bill, and they focus on that one part of the dollar bill. I'm going to have to research and find out what that's all about. Yeah. It's like, what? No, so this is in your face, people. This is Illuminati in your face. Anybody that thinks that they don't exist and I'm a crazy person, fuck you. <laughs> All right? I have just been vic um, vindic what do they call it? I've I've been unvilified. Oh, okay. I've been proven correct, basically. No doubt, no doubt about it. I've been proven fucking correct. <laughs> oh my god. I saw this commercial and I know my job fucking wrong. I know it did. Bell like, Illuminati. I saw the stacker part before, well, yeah, you know, and, and, and like, watched it, and, and, and I'm like, saw the whole thing, and I'm like, oh my god. And, and Hans, Hans Ol should appreciate this as he goes by Jay Dread there in the chat because right, in the, in right. the movie, the Judge Dread movie, um, he's in the he's in the future, and and, and well, I guess everything's in the future, uh, but but then they point out that all restaurants are now Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, it, I oh my god, I can't. I if they put this new Taco Bell up like over there, like by Menards over there, like Culver's, there was like this empty lot, you know. So they, you know, Taco Bell bought it, Pepsi bought it, whatever. Yeah, they put up the fucking Taco Bell in four months. They can literally put them fuckers up in like four months. Oh, easily. Right. Oh yeah, and they had it all going and. We went there the one time, and I told them, what, I will never go there again. I'm like, I never, I, I didn't even want to go there, but it was like, we did, because it was new or whatever. Right. And I was not used to the menu, and I just ordered something, and the stuff I had was completely nasty, and I didn't even eat it. I didn't even eat it all. I, I just, like, was like, okay, I'm disgusted. Like, I had two bites, and I'm do I was done. I'm like, I know, this is not going to work for me. <laughs> I was just not pressed. Because they put this white sauce on there that I wasn't expecting. And I thought it was supposed to be sour cream, but it wasn't. I'm like, what is this white stuff? You know what I mean? I just didn't 
No, so, it wasn't what, nothing gross or nasty like that. Don't even go there, people. <laughs> it was just... Spooge. It was Spooge kind tackle. of special sour cream. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is totally gross. I'm like, I cannot... It was just, I couldn't even... If I Usually if I eat tacos, it's ones that I make myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I just do not trust them fucking Taco Bell is... I call it Taco Hell for a reason. I I literally boycott that fucking establishment. I mean, never go there. That's not what this is about. This is about this commercial that's like throwing it in our faces that how it is. That oh, pyramid oh, right. they show, that's the high <laughs> that's the hierarchical hierarchical uh, how do you say that word? Hierarchical? Hi Hier- hierarchical. Oh, what? see, uh, I, I was wrong. It, it wasn't Judge Dredd. It was the Demolition Man. Thanks, Hans. I, I, I knew you would know. See, he knows that, though. See, what? that's a slime. He knows that. Because he knows about uh, Sly, Sly. Right. <laughs> he is a huge fan of Sinister so Slug. I mean, you know, which is fine. Yo, but... Adrian! <laughs> Adrian! <laughs> yeah, but Rambles has to be some of the worst fucking movies ever. That's, that's when he was his worst acting ever. Rambles, the Rambo movies, Sly did not act at all. He was just like, ugh, ugh, ugh. He's like, really, dude? You're not a fucking actor. Sorry, buddy, you're not. Just a big you know, Rambo, Rocky, all he had to do was get the shit beat out of him, run up the fucking stairs in Philadelphia. Ooh. Ooh, Adrian! Oh, Adrian! Yeah, I mean, come on, dude. He basically said 30 words in that fucking movie. And that was that, and that was 29 too many. There's not a lot of acting ability there right there. There's not a lot of acting ability right there. No, no, Stallone was never... Lying. That's all he... He is not an actor. Sly Stallone is, like, one of the worst actors ever. That's just my opinion. I mean, I get it. You know, the love affair. You know, I get it. You know, but... The Italian Stallion trap, but that's a movie. He was playing a role. He's not like that in real life. He might be. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know. But have you ever seen his daughters? He married a model. He's got these three daughters, and they're a freaking model. They, they could be all three of them be models too. Yeah. Because the model's really tall. Like his wife has to be taller because she was like this model, you know. Yeah. And I mean, seriously, his daughters are like freaking gorgeous. Great. Well, I don't know. He didn't get it from him. And that's beside the point. I he, mean, he, I like this example himself, not the character Hoover. Sly, the person that played Ramble. <laughs> Is he not Ramble himself. The char- the man that played Ramble in the movie. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Rambo, right. Rambo's so corny. <laughs> no, no, we brought up some good points with this Illuminati crap being thrown right in our faces. Yeah. They are trying to normalize you and get you used to the fact that this is the way it is. And if you haven't known it yet, you're going to know it now because here it is right in your freaking face. Yeah. You know, if you don't recognize it, well, that's your problem, you know. But we're telling you right here, that basically that's a, a fucking... Tutorial grip. Oh, sure. Of the Illuminati. Come I mean, on down. You know, get your. I've been telling the boys, and, the, you know, remember the first time I told the boys, I'm like, you know that Lady Gaga is Illuminati, right? You know Katy Perry is Illuminati, right? Yeah. You know that they're Illuminati, right? And they're like, what's that, Mom? Then I explained it to them one time. I don't know how old they were, I think. And they were older, you know. Right. Well, 13, you know, whatever. Oh, no, that's not real. That's not true. No, we don't believe that. No, oh, yeah. Oh, you mean... Through the years now, they've been giving me shit. <laughs> oh, you mean that Luminati shit? Luminati shit you're talking about all the time? And then every time, every chance I get to prove it, mm-hmm. I fucking I prove it. I let them know. Oh, well, there you I, go. You now, I'm going to be like, check out that fucking Taco Bell commercial. That's right. It's a fucked up commercial. <laughs> that's true if the blue knife from this. <laughs> you know, <the> <laughs> you know? Uh, I mean, seriously. You know, I've been just, you know, I've had to do what I've had to do. My kids went to public school. But I've done the best I can do to combat the indoctrination, you know. Um but at the same time, 
you know, you know, every obviously my way of thinking is not the way of thinking that you should at school, right? No, <laughs> you know? no, 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 not even close. I'm, I'm totally off the, off the radar. They, 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 they totally teach you the not to think in school. I'm off the charts. I'm off the charts. But, school, so school. I've had to balance, like, this. I've had to play this balancing act. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you know, but I always have an answer. See, I'm proud of myself because I always have an answer. And I got research. Oh, your research is done on the internet. Yes? Not everything on the internet is bullshit. You know, it can actually look up things on the internet, like, you know, historical documents and crap like that, you know. <laughs> here's here's the here's the here's the tweet from Hal for the night. Says, Here. Here from the new Freakers Balluminati sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah. Freakers Balluminati. I, even even the, thing, the, the word Illuminati in the word. Like they made up a new word, like to fit with the Taco Bell commercial, Bell yeah. Illuminati. Right. It's like, how blatant can you fucking be? It's so fucking blatant. I can't even believe it. I, I'm like totally like, wow. I know. I'm like, okay. Flabbergasted, right? Flabbergasted, now, would that be the word? Yes, that would be the word. It's, they're totally like in your face now. They're not even, they're operating in plain sight. They're not even trying to hide anymore. No. Like before, you, they used to want to like hide and be all secretive and be all subliminal. No, now they're done with the subliminal. And then they're probably still doing the subliminal. But they're like full bore right, right in your face right now. Sure. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, we're not holding back. No. No, we're not holding that. We're we're putting this out there. I mean, think about the people that made that commercial. I mean, think about it. I mean, really? It, it's just like, wow. And Taco Bell is owned by Pepsi, by the way. And I don't know who owns Pepsi, but... I think Pepsi owns I mean, Pepsi. And, right, I think it's PepsiCo.com. Yeah. Or PepsiCo.com. <laughs> Just Pep See? PepsiCo I'm Incorporated. Weird, you know? yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, it's in your face now, and it's like, you know, if, if you do the research, you know that Pepsi owns Taco Bell. So you know Pepsi is part of the Illuminati. You mean just because they use uh, dead baby parts in their soda? Yeah, that could have something to do with it, too. <laughs> you know? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah. Yes, we have actually done a story on this show about that. Yes, and we have. At the time, I was drink, I was drinking Pepsi, and I still do drink Pepsi. And Grim, I couldn't believe it. I still kept drinking Pepsi. Like that's how ingrained I am. Like I didn't believe it. I don't believe. I, I'm like I even said when he was reading that story. I'm like, no, they're not doing that. They they can't. <laughs> like I was being a total sheeple dude. Yeah. Because I can't. How can you? No. How and why would you do that? That that's the weird you know, thing. I why? Thought why? It was fake. I thought uh, it was what, fake. Well, I how can that? Fake. How can possibly dead baby parts make your soda taste better? But I, I, how how do I know it's true? <laughs> so it, it, at the time I thought it wasn't real. No, it, I, it's, I didn't, it's true. I it's fake true. Story. I did. It's, it's not. A, there, it's not. A, it's know? a true story. How do we know? How do we know? Because it's a true story. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I don't know. I don't have the data in front of me yet, but whatever. I know what you mean. I know you. Mean. Yeah. Anyway, here, here's something else they throw in your face. This is uh, an article from December 21st, but it Dupont. still applies. Study. Universal flu vaccine uses advanced genetic tech to fight the bug more effectively. And they've got, great. They, they've got this picture of this nice little girl sitting there smiling, getting the thing stuck in her arm by this nice-looking woman doctor. Well, it's not nice looking, but older, older, you know, woman doctor, but still, you know, friendly looking. And then it goes on to say here, the flu is a smart virus. It's constantly changing and adapting, rewriting its genetic code to invade our bodies. That's why millions of people who get flu vaccines still get sick every year. But researchers from the University of Washington are working on an answer. A universal flu vaccine that uses cutting edge technology to attack parts of the virus and stay Wonderful. that stay constant every year, potentially making it vastly more effective at preventing the uh, disease. Them and their words. 
potentially may. Really? You motherfuckers and your words. Fuck you. The new technology the new technology is uh, detailed in a study published uh where U UW Medicine uh by researcher where? General Deborah Medicine? U UW Medicine. I don't know where that that's, is. That's University of Wisconsin Madison. Okay. Um uh, yeah. uh, by researcher sure. Deborah Fuller that said it has the potential to completely change how we prevent all yes. kinds all kinds of the flu. The vaccine hey, must I have a question. Is potential in quotations? Uh no. Only it only be. it's only it in, it's only in quotations when I say it. It's bad grammar. Uh, however, right. however it should be. However, the word universal is in quotations. See? Oh the motherfuckers. <laughs> they just do this to you. They make you they fuck up your mind. They totally fuck up your mind. Every chance they get, they're gonna fuck up your mind. The virus can also undergo genetic shifts, major changes in its genes. That was the case in 2009 when a new yes. strain of the flu that originated in pigs caused a pandemic. It never well, happened. That 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 never happened. That never uh, happened. The pig fly flu. It never happened. But there. It was a big hype just to get you fucking. But they're saying they're, they're stating they're stating it here as fact that that was the case in 2009 when a new strain of flu that originated in pigs caused a pandemic. It never fucking happened. <laughs> there was no pandemic. Oh shit! No shit, sir. I feel. Anyone with a brain fucking knew that. The, the swine flu strain had a completely different set of genes, oh meaning that God. none of the available flu vaccines worked on it. <sighs> anyway, I'll let, you, I'll let you. I'll let you. I'll let you. This just gets me started. I'll let you check this article out for yourself. I'll let you check the article out for yourself. It's on geekwire.com. Um, <laughs> but 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 they're pushing this out there. Uh, as though this is going to be the they new... They push everything out there. They push everything. They, uh, everything they do. Whenever they do that, run. Be wary. But like, Be you, like you said, right Not in your face. Lie. Right in your face. They, 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 they bury the lies right into the, into the text, of, text of the article. And, and you're just yes. supposed to buy it. If they said it, it's right. true. You're just supposed to eat it all up and it, not think for yourself and just trust these motherfucking bastards. It's like, really? No. You mother I don't trust you as far as I can fucking throw you, bitch. No, I do not trust you. You do not have my best interest at heart. You're a lying fucking snake fucking asshole. Get away from me. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate this. I'm, you know, I hate this. This is why I do this show. I, I hate this so much that I have to vent. Oh, my God. I fucking explode. I know. I know. Crazy! It's insane, <laughs> and people buy this crap. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Oh, How can you? How can you put any dose of faith or trust or anything? Let them do their thinking for you. How can you do that? How can anyone do that? I just, I, I don't know. I don't understand it. Well, here's here's some good news, maybe for your boys. Um. <laughs> okay, good news is, could be good. Yeah, some good news is good. Oh, you know, oh. if it's real, truly good just news. Go, just go. I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> All right, here it is. Um, this is on westword. dot com. Okay. And if your if your kids, you know, maybe want to go out of state, this could be good news for them. Boulder, Colorado, entrepreneur yeah. offering cannabis scholarships. For well, students, they don't, they don't smoke weed. It don't matter. You don't have to smoke weed to be uh, a a good grower of weed. That's true. It, it that's says that the Boulder pot entrepreneur wants to <laughs> share both his wealth and interest in cannabis. Matt Kind, host of, and you don't know that they don't smoke weed. Uh, and no, Matt, I, Matt I, Kind, I, I, host of the podcast uh, Canna, Canna Insider, is starting a scholarship fund to encourage students to consider a job in legal pot. The, the Canna Insider Cannabis Education Scholarship will offer $3,000 in the first quarter of 2018 oh. to a student who shows the best combination of passion, curiosity, and commitment for cannabis nice. 
necessary for success in the historic blossoming industry. The program will be ongoing and will benefit students in 2018, according to an announcement from Canna Insider. I mean, and then did we do a story? And and, and just tell your boys if they, uh, look, you maybe not, you're not interested in pot. This is going to be a or it was a last year ten billion dollar industry, and right. it's, that is expected to go up to what's it say twenty four and a half billion. Um, Crap. So. It's, it's the, if they're looking for a place where they can make some money and actually enjoy the work they do, uh, because they, they like plants, don't they? Sure. Okay, and 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 what what better plant to to like? Right, I agree. I I, I have no other. Oh. So it says we don't even have basic foundation layer bud it's tenders. It's my favorite plant, by the way. But bud tenders, cultivators, people who understand marketing. Uh, they they right. need to, they need well, to come I mean, into this industry. So it, well, it's it's good. You know, that's the thing that you know people aren't understanding is that like Colorado, they got so much money coming in from the you know the tax on it, they don't know what to do with it. Right. I mean, and if every state is broke, what better way than this to build up the economy of the state? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, what better way? It's a fucking plant. It helps people. Yeah. You know, how can this be bad? How? It, it not only does it help people, but, you know, medically, it, it, the, the male plants but, but can they produce can, textiles and oil and, and everything. They could, they could get a scholarship at this and... and right? And, no, that's a good idea. And, and you could go visit them in Colorado and... But we did a story a couple of weeks ago how Boulder wants people to move there. They're giving incentives for people to buy homes there. Yeah, there you go. There's always that, too. Like a couple of weeks ago or three weeks ago. Or three years and, ago and you could go out there and be like, you here. know, you, you could probably get a job. Yep. You could probably get a what? job as like a taste tester or something. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I'll be a baker. I, I'm an awesome gun yeah. maker. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. There you I go. got skills. Mad skills. <laughs> mad skills. I got skills. Yeah, skills. Bacon. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm good. I'm right there. I'm a baker. Okay. Well, here we go. Some more tunes. I don't want to wait. I mean, no. come on. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Here, 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 here we go. Some more tunes here. Alrighty then. Enjoy it. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's uh, uh right said Leo. No, that's uh, Leo Maraccioli uh, doing his metal cover of a right said Fred's. I'm too sexy. <laughs> he just released that today. So, <laughs> uh, I saw that this morning. It just cracked me up. Uh, so there you go uh, on that. Before that, a free and slave request. Doc Watson and Mama Don't Allow No Music. No, she don't. Good song there. Good, uh, good tune. Uh, before that, a Moose Girl request. Thomas Dolby. She blinded me with science. <laughs> He did. He did. Whoever did. <laughs> yeah, Leo. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, no, it was good. It was good. <laughs> so hello to newcomers, Circle and Anti Hand. Woohoo! And Hansel. Yay, Circle, Anti. Hey, Anti. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my fingers are on the keyboard right. Okay. Yep, so... My favorite uh, song is on right now on the radio that I have playing in the background. And, 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 oh, okay. It's one of my favorite bands of all time, I have to say. Okay, great. Do you have something to talk about specifically? <laughs> Sorry. I, I will in a moment. Uh, right. I, I was going to say, like, I heard a Tom Petty song the other day, and I have to say, I just love that guy. I mean, some of the songs that he, I don't know if he wrote all his songs, but some of his songs that he put out, fucking awesome. That's all I can say. The lyrics are incredible. Like, I've been l listening to the lyrics more now because he's not with us anymore, you know? Yeah. It just freaking breaks my freaking heart sometimes. It just brings me back to high school sometimes. 
to other times in my life, his music is just, like, iconic. I mean, he, I don't think he got enough credit that he should have gotten. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Sure, he sure. He the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, yet... Sure. If he, if he didn't get to do the Rock and Roll Hall if he not, he should have been. Well, right now. he'll probably do it, you know, he's dead no, now. No, he so. probably is, though. I'm just wondering if he is or not. I, I don't know. He should have been already. I think he is. I want to say that he is because he should have been. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway. So, I mean, how about this? Right. All of us got tired of those grainy pictures of Area 51, right? How about yeah. How about Area 52? <laughs> Really? Uh, where's this at? <laughs> Since you've never heard about it, it's another secretive Nevada range alleged by some to house vast underground <laughs> facilities. Local, local Las Vegas television reports on these controversial claims. It says, a clean nuclear device was used to create a giant chamber under Puata, Puata Mesa, whatever, in Area 52. The facility that's capable of housing 25,000 people or troops is active out there. A part of the following conversation is from a cement truck driver who worked out there. He said it takes four hours to get to the bottom, uh, dump the oh. cement, and then wind his way back up. For some oh. reason, for some reason, he disappeared off the face of the earth after he told us the story. And that a part of the claim, a high-speed underground train runs from Area 52 to Las Vegas. The concept that Nevada test site tunnel workers say is highly unlikely, and he says pilots told him that there are secret runways out there that open and close like zippers. They look down on it, and, it. and it will be the forest or the desert or natural landscape, and all of a sudden it will unzip and, <laughs> like this, and they will see a runway, and then the landscape zips, <laughs> zips back up. a long time ago. I haven't even been there. It zips back up to look like it's normal. Perhaps there's evidence backing up this claim. A former scientist, Bob Lazar, who said he's working on flying saucers at a place called S4 or Site 4. There are more than one S4 on the tight site range, test range, um, and uh, one of them is at TTR. I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, workers have claimed that S4 inside Area 52 requires special entry. It's believed oh it's believed that highly advanced radar research. This isn't a shocker to me. This is not something new. This doesn't surprise me at all. This is like not even like a thing. Like I doesn't. I know it's existed all along. Doesn't like. It's not like shocking to me. Area I mean, 52. <laughs> but no, it's not shocking to me. It doesn't surprise me. This thing's obviously existed for a long time. It's nothing new. It's been there forever. Anyway, that, that, that's over there. That's over there on LockLip. dot com. I'm just saying, it, it, you can't think of something new. It's, it's been there for a long time. Obviously, if it's four miles fucking deep, they've been working on those things for a long fucking time. Oh, you know, I went back and I watched that uh, yeah, American Horror Story. You, you like that show? No, uh, I don't watch it anymore. Okay. Well, I don't know if you remember the uh, the season called Asylum. Yes. You know a that bit. that that season has everything in it. They, they got they, it it's aliens. You got the, the Nazi scientists experimenting right. on people. It, it's crazy shit. You got you got you got the it's ghost guys. You got the the the, the, the massive psycho killers. What? Yeah, it's the Illuminati. They're in Hollywood. They're in every fucking show. It's like this product placement. Like, it's NBC. If you watch an NBC show, you'll see a fucking Walmart bag and an NBC show. It's like, what does that fucking tell you? <laughs> you know, it's product placement on purpose. Oh, it's absolutely. It's so fucking blatant. It's just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I get sick of it. I'm sorry, but I do. I get sick of it. So I don't like stuff. Who likes anything for some of fucking throat? Or force on anything upon you. No oh, here, here's one that'll interest you. No, no one likes that. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. All this shit's being forced on you. Think about that. How much fucking shit can you fucking take? Uh, I, I don't know. Come on. Well, here's what... Big currency. We're working as slaves. 40 hour weeks. We can't get a fucking break. You know, everything costs more. Like, everything goes up. Okay. Clothes go up. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Free, free, free. 
It's good for you, enslaved. And your wage does not go up accordingly. So you're always stuck in a hole. You're always, like, behind. you got to get a credit card to fucking make ends meet. you got to fucking take take out a loan on a bank. you got to fucking, you know, to buy a car, you got to get a loan. To, buy a, to do improvements on your home, you got to get a loan. You know, something's wrong with this picture. It, you can't keep up. It's a fucking joke. I get so sick of it. It's like, I do what I got to do. And I'm doing my best, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, it's just like, what? why am I doing this? Like, I don't even want to own a home anymore. Because I can't keep up on the maintenance properly. It, like, seriously, it would be better to rent than to own a home, home right now. For me, in my position. Yeah, maybe. You know? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, then you I, can't, I, I can't afford three thousand dollars a year to pay for my home. Well, rent's gonna be a, you know more than that, no. so. No, three thousand dollars a year for properties. Yeah, well, rent's gonna be more than that. No, not if I get a no. I don't need a big as big of a uh, place. Three thousand dollars a year. That's 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 nothing. For but, I mean, but you're, you're, you're gonna be paying maintenance on the home. The utilities. Uh, well, you still got to pay. You still got to pay utilities. I, have to pay for it. I can't afford it. That's what I'm saying. This, we're all stuck in this position. We have to take out credit, you know, or loans or whatever. Yeah. We have to finance everything. Right. And well, that's, that's what they want. Like this for a reason. We yeah. all fucking know it. We all know we're being fucking scammed and shit on every fucking day. Hell yeah, of course. Everybody. Of course. And with the insurance payments you got to make. The cost of food, the cost of everything, the cost of gas, the cost of maintaining your vehicle. Yeah, cost. money sucks. Name it. Yeah. It all costs fucking money. No <laughs> one can keep up with it all. That's why the banks are keep making money because they're the ones that give out the loan. All right. Well, we're... we're <laughs> let, 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 this is a vicious cycle, though. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you this story. We're going to close out with this story here because it's going to interest you. Okay. This is on bloodydisgusting.com. The Slender Man drips onto the haunting first poster. The first studio incarnation of the chilling Slender Man is haunting theaters May 18th, 2018. Through Sony Screen Gems, the haunting teaser poster gives us our first look at the creepy pasta come to life. Although he's still hiding in the shadows, maybe he'll he'll appear when the trailer drops tomorrow. The Conjuring and uh, Wish Upon His Wish Upon Joey King, uh, whatever. Um, oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. All that doesn't matter. What matters is they're making a Slender Man movie. I heard about that. <laughs> they, they interviewed the guy on on. They talked about this in the radio show that I listened to in the morning, and it's just like you know what? They're like really. Why would you want to do that? You want to make this, you want to put this out there in the public and have kids the same age as these kids that did this, see this? They were all against it, and I'm against it. I don't think they should do it. They're like glamorizing it, crap. Well, and it's just a story. It's it. just a story. It's bullshit. No, but it's bullshit. Well, they, and they talk, no. about, they talk about the girls, the 12, two 12 year old girls from Wisconsin that lured the friend into the woods. They talk oh, about that here in the bullshit. article. Bullshit. Yeah. Anyway, uh, anyway, we gotta do our, we gotta do our we gotta do our last set here. Uh, Let's do it. And and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fired up. I don't know what it is. I don't even I don't even have to have a reason. No, you, you don't know, need a reason. Fuck. It's like no, you're, I don't need a reason. You're the muddy moose girl. You need no reason. It is. You know? Yeah. Right. You know? You don't want to irritate the moose. The fucking shit irritates me. You know? I get irritated. All right. Well, here's the and fish. Here's the fish woman. All right. Elkington on his banjo singing Black Betty. <laughs> For that, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers doing Fleetwood Mac's 
Peter Green's Fleetwood Max. Oh, well. And we kicked it off there with Samantha Fish doing Lay It Down. Now, um, tomorrow, uh, here on RLM, Real Radio Media, RLM Radio, RLMRadio.xyz, you're going to have the dork table with the dorkiest of the dorks. That's right, Flash and Grammy at noon <laughs> Eastern. What? Woohoo! <laughs> Happy. Flash and Grammy at noon Eastern. And then I'll be yeah. on Sunday at noon Eastern with the blues right here on RLM Radio. And chat in the chat. Come on into the chat. Play some trivia with us. Yeah. Play some trivia. Try to kick yeah, our asses. so I'll be on it from, from uh, noon. No, we have useless knowledge in our brains. That's right. Play it around. <laughs> So I'll, I'll be on from noon to 3 uh, on Sunday, at which time at 3 p.m. Eastern will be Hal Anthony, Behind the Woodshed, a show you want to listen to. And, and then at 7 p.m. Eastern is Gary L. and uh, Gigi's Boo on The Road Less Traveled. And uh, they always yeah. talk about some really cool stuff, fun stuff. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's just fun listening to Gigi's Boo talk. Um, yeah. <laughs> she's got that, that accent, that Carolina accent. Uh, <laughs> so, right. Anyway. No, so, awesome. Yeah, she's cool. And then uh, uh, Grammy will be back again on Wednesday at a normal time for her show. Grammy's Rocket Chair. And uh, Rocket we'll be back on Friday night again for more of this. Freakers. Freakers balls. More Freakers balls to the wall. More more, more Freakers. Freakers. Yeah, freakers ball Illuminati. <laughs> oh my god, never say it again. Never say that again. Oh, okay. Never say that ever again, Graham. Forget about Illuminati. Alright, um. <laughs> no, don't do that, no, never again. Don't no, let's it now. No more. Alright. Alright. Uh, anyway. uh, you got anything else? I'm good. I'm, I'm done. Okay, me too. Peace.